wearing, diamond ring wearing, kids stealing, woo, wheeling, dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators. You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kids stealing, wheeling, dealing, limo jet flying. I'm fresh to death, I'm Paul Barry, not at all scary When I open like Betty Wops, they find to these circles that's going in like a carry shot Woo! I'm going in like a Mary Pop, off that Mary Crop at the top flow at the Marriott So questioning me is like questioning you See we the best dressed, so come and get blessed with the crew Not one but two, different ways to slaughter your crew Commit a tat across the chest, I guess she blessed with the truth People want to see them checks, representation of proof Living through my elders trying to resonate to the youth But ain't nothing to get my flash on Legevity is heavily embedded in my melanin Layman terms, I last long My ground repetitive, I'm smoother than real silk Lyrical cash cow, who can't cry but spilled milk We in here, you talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying We Rick flaring on them niggas We Rick flaring on them niggas This preparation with greatness Industry full of fakeness is really up for the taking See life is what happened to you More so how you take it Don't get stripped of your knowledge And mentally leave you naked I like to live otherwise I'm sorry that I'm fresh to death I put the polo and apologize See black sun We ain't nothing like the mother guys Quit to socialize You organize Then we mobilize off the deep end like a scuba diver And no confusion, just keep it pushing like Uber drivers Woo! Business fresh just like a supervisor In a Gucci visor, can't find a smoother rhymer You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying We Rick flaring on them niggas We Rick flaring on them niggas You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Get into it, okay, look, I'ma say this and keep it moving My boy Scotty, man, he all for the least Black grad, paying college, I'm glad that he called me Walk it, cause we all been taught that talk is cheap Even primetime knows got for the HBCU streets This topic got me all out of sorts. 
I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, Scotty, with a late night show. Listen, I'm not gonna be too loud because my roommate's in the back sleeping, so I gotta keep this kind of low key. So don't don't hit me with the smooth jazz voice. I just gotta keep it low key. Hey, appreciate you guys for tuning in. So let me let me let me get right into it. Let me get right into it. So I saw this. I I saw this on um, Swack and the Fool. Swack and the Fool reported this on their uh on their page. And what are we doing? Like the first thing I thought when people were sending this to me, I'm like, what the hell are we doing? And once again, there's no shot. I'm, it's not saying that Coach Odoms is a bad coach. I'm not saying that at all. And that's what people like to take it. Like, oh, Scuddy, respect. I'm not saying Coach Odoms is bad, but what the fuck are we doing? Like, <laughs> what it, I, and, it, I'm a, and I'm going to contradict myself, right? Because once again, I told you guys, there, there's a sleeper pick for PV that I've been hearing running around, and it's Coach Dancy. Right now, do I think Coach Dancy to take the PV job? Nah, I wanted him to be at Alabama State. They got a real estate agent. That's what happens. All right, that's what happens. They 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 got a real estate agent. But but Odom's now. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've heard Odom's talk about Norfolk State and talk about the homecoming and things like that, and nobody showing up and nobody doing this and nobody doing that and supporting the program. Well, you're gonna have the same stuff at PV. You're going to have the same issues with PV as well. So you're not going to get the Southern feel that you thought ha- that that you thought was happening. And what is is are we dating exes now? Because so this is what what like this is what I feel they're doing. Oh my god, oh Southern, you got our coach, Coach Dooley. All right, we're gonna get your O coach, Dawson Odoms. Like, I feel like I feel like these dudes are like passing Kim Carda- Kim Kardashian around. Like Ray J, I hit it first type mess. Like, come on, like what are we doing? What are we? To win. Hold on. You know, once you get a white lady, the call lines is open. You are the only participant in the conference. All right. So listen, follow me on IG and Twitter, Oscar underscore TV. All right. Make sure you do that. Uh, also, I will be at the Celebration Bowl on Saturday. I'll be down in Atlanta. I'm, we're in South Carolina right now, but we'll be in Atlanta Friday midday. So um, let me know where the party's at. Hit me up in my IG or Twitter or whatever. If you got my number, hit me up on my number. But you got to, like, I, I, how could this be beneficial to the swag? What, really? We're, we're in an air that you're trying to build something completely new. Right. You're trying to bring the swag up to a certain prominence level. That's why you bring in a Hugh Jackson. That's why you bring in a Deion Sanders. That's why you look at a Ray Lewis and an Ed Reed. You're trying to bring the swag up in prominence. Bringing back Coach Odoms does not do that. Right now, does it make them competitive? It probably absolutely will. I'm not once again, I'm not taking anything away from Odoms in his recruiting and them coaching the team, them being disciplined. But, bro, this is not going to make the ESPN ticker. This is not going to make kids say, oh, shit. We, they got Odoms? Oh, we got to go to PV now. That's not... Like, no, bro. No. Stop. What, like... Even... I haven't heard anything from anybody that this is even true. And I know a couple PV alums that are wishing for KJ Black, that are wishing for Kevin Sumlin, you know, all these type of things. But I'm telling you right now, be very mindset if if Coach Dancy slips into this position. All right. If he backs door into this position. Now, once again, I'm on I'm on record saying I don't think this is a good job for him. All right. I'm on record saying that. But. If he can do what he did at Valley, he can damn sure do do what he's doing at PV and probably do it even better because he's a damn good coach. He's a damn good recruiter and he's a damn good motivator. So I would love to see him elevate. Um, 
I would love to see him elevate and go to a better place that will support him, put money behind him, and let him do what he does, right? So I'll give you that. But Coach Odom's coming. Bro, you left for a reason, bro. Stay gone, okay? Stay gone. I'm not even – I'm really not even trying to be on this long. I want to hear from y'all. What do you feel about it? Once again, this was reported by Swack and the Fool, not me. All right? I want to be very clear. This was not reported by me. Mm -mm. I, if I even heard of the news, I probably wouldn't even broke it. I ain't even going to lie to you because I'd have been like, I don't want to put my name on this. I don't want to put my name on this. I don't want to be nowhere near this foolishness. I don't want to be nowhere near this foolishness, not even a little bit. And PV, if what you take, you've been taking three weeks to pick this guy. This is what you're doing. You've been taking three, you've been taking two and a half, three weeks to pick your coach to come get an Odom's. We over here thinking you trying to make million dollar moves. You over here trying to get 25 cents on the dollar. Once again, what are we doing? Why is this taking so long? Grambling had two big time coaches, Ed and Hugh, both got offered within two weeks. The firm did their job. They got them in. They got them out. Boom. They got Hugh Jackson. What are you doing? Like, help me understand what is going on. Just, just help me. N mm, ninja. I don't get it, man. So at the end of the day, is this great for the swag? No, not by far. Is Odom's a good coach? Not taking anything away from him. He's a hell of a coach, hell of a disciplinarian. Uh, you know, he's going to be prepared, everything like that. He's a tough-minded guy. He's going to grind and all that type of stuff. But there, this is not exciting. This is this is not, you know. Listen, we, we you got you got enough you got enough non-coaching at Alabama State to last a lifetime. Okay. So can we just have, can we just let them have the no headline stories and can everybody else get on the same page? You got Maynard, who's a personality. You know how he gets down. You got Willie Simmons, who got FAMU, LeBron, Nike, all that type of stuff. They got their headlines. You already know what Jackson State bringing. You got Hugh at Grambling. You got Dooley at Southern. That was, that's, that's a borderline headline, but he's a, he's a Louisiana kid. So, okay, to A, if he wasn't such a racist, I would be so down for that. Urban Myers is racist, bro. I don't care no I said Urban Myers is racist. But if he wasn't such a racist, I would definitely be down for that. I think Urban Meyer would be a great hire, uh, especially in Texas. That would be awesome. But you know, but that's not that's that's not even that's neither here nor there. But this listen, man. I'm I'm just I'm here for the excitement. Okay. I'm here for the excitement. And once again, I'm telling you guys right now. All right. This is reported by me. Please watch out for Coach Vincent Dancy taking over that PV job. All right. I'm not saying it's official. I'm not saying this. <laughs> I'm not doing unofficially, officially nothing. All I'm telling you is, is if it happens, just in the back of your mind, say, damn, that Bama Scott, boy, he be hearing stuff. All right. So just be on the lookout for that. But, uh, so, I mean, call lines are open, guys. 516-259-9041. 516-259-9041. I know you guys are probably watching the game and stuff like that. Listen, I'm, I'm probably being on here for 30 minutes, and I'm out, all right? I'm out. Tomorrow, I got to – tomorrow we're doing a – um. I think I'm, I'm going to do a show early morning, 10 a.m. I'm going to do an early morning show, uh, 10 a.m., and then you – listen, no, I'm doing no pregame show, okay? for um on saturday all right i'm doing no pregame show saturday i probably do a pregame show friday night um when i'm at atlanta all right so friday night i'm gonna do a pregame show for the celebration bowl i am going to the celebration bowl the game is at noon i have to be there at least about nine or eight so i'm not doing a pregame show on saturday so don't look for me don't look listen don't don't look for me all right just giving you all the heads up right now i might do a show at 10 in the morning Hey, hey, what's up? Nine. What's up, caller? Talk to me. Hey, man, it's your friendly neighborhood, second generation Jackson State grad. Uh, couple questions. Well, earlier I know that Mr. Ford had said that PV wasn't as interested in athletics, and and I, and I can tell you that going back when PV was going through that really long time of uh, not winning, 
I can tell you something that a lot of us in the swag, and I know it's going to sound crazy. A lot of us in the swag, we didn't have nobody like really clown TV when they went through that record breaking losing mm-hmm. because everybody in the swag would say, well, they produce international engineers. And so like everybody kind of hung their head on TV. That's, that's what they were known for. They were known for producing some of the best African-American engineers like on the planet. So I, one of the things that you may want to do is, is touch base with some of your PV folks and just really find out how true is that, that PV may be more interested in being an academic school than an athletic school. And, and, and so that's what I would say to that. And I think that if they go with an old, let's say if they don't go with Sumlin, they don't go with KJ Black, they don't go with a Jerry Mac, if they go with something like the Odom or somebody like that, I think it will really confirm that they are much more, uh, concerned with being an academic school than an athletic school. And then the question I have for you is, and I know it's hypothetical. My question is, because I know you would have a lot more uh, experience with this than me. Dance is having a really good recruiting class. A good one. So, so my question would be, what kind of look would that be if he took the PV job? I mean, do you think those students that he uh, recruited would be inclined to go with him? Would they feel betrayed? I mean, how, how, how does that work that you, you get somebody in and then before the season even starts, yeah, I'm out. Does he ask them, hey, y'all want to come with me? How does all that work? So he can't he can't say do they want to come with him because they signed a letter, letter, letter of intent to Valley. So they can't transfer to – they can't transfer once he leaves. They'll have to wait another year, go with him later, and things like that. Um but you know, a lot of coaches do that. Notre Dame is Notre Dame is a great example of that. You know, he was on the recruiting trail when he got offered the job and then took the job at LSU. Um, so are players going to leave and go to LSU? Maybe, but I doubt it. That's why they wanted that um the black coach to stay on because he knew the players, you know what I'm saying? That's what usually, right. why, that's why players usually leave is because they get a whole new regime and you don't know, you know, you, these aren't your guys. You know, that's the only thing, like, like pretty much what Dion did when he got to Jackson state, these aren't my guys. You know what I'm saying? Let me go get my guys. Right. And then that's why kids end up transferring to the school. Their old coach was at because they recruited them. They know what they wanted out of them. So that's what you get in those situations. That's why a lot of kids do leave and go follow their coach after that year, or maybe at the end of the season, you know, cause usually this happens at the end of the season. So kids are like, Oh shoot. When the season over, I'm going with you coach. You know what I'm saying? So that's usually what right. happens. It doesn't really happen in the beginning like this. Okay. So, and, and I just want, just one last thing. I see you got a, a D black PV alum there. I, when I was saying that people thought of that, everybody some swag thought about PV as an engineering school. That wasn't a diss. I mean, mm-hmm. I want to be really clear. Uh, like other people who weren't in the swag, this is what I know from like Jackson state folks, Southern folks, or, you know, people I know, people would try to clown PV. They would say, Oh, PV. And, and, and every, everybody in our swag knew w- wouldn't let anybody clown PV because they say like, these people produce, international engineers shut up so i wasn't it's, i just want to be clear i wasn't dissing uh pb for being more inter, inter, uh, interested in academics you know and again maybe that maybe that pb alarm can call in and give you some insight and give you some 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 actual like facts that i may not be of, of, of which i may be aware but i do think that if they don't go with some of the big names it may signal that they may not be as interested in athletics as as they are in academics and i don't know if that's a you know bad thing for them but you know that's that's all i said so i shut up and let some other folks tell me no problem appreciate it all right all right so listen i know a lot of people saying dancy just signed the extension that doesn't mean anything okay that means absolutely nothing all right if pv's willing to buy, uh, pay his buyout because if we're being honest um Coach, F- uh, Coach Fobbs had another year in his deal, right? The reason he got out of Gramlin is because they paid for his buyout. So if PV is willing to pay, and we know PV has the money, let's not play. We know PV has the money. So if they're willing to pay for his buyout, then they pay his buyout and they give him a contract on top of that. D Black, D Black, we care about athletics in the story. E- 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 okay, how about you call it and explain that? Because the way y'all looking at coaching hiring, you don't give a damn. Um, So, yeah, so they can... They can do his buyout from Valley, and then once again, he'll go to PV. They'll give him a new contract and all that. So let's not act like, now. Nah, does it happen in black college sports all the time? It doesn't. I mean, 
because the funds are so limited. So you're not willing to do a, a, a buyout and and then pay a new contract and things like that. How the big how the big power five conferences do where they owe you a million and they're getting paid another million on this side and stuff like that. But it is possible. So it's, it's not it's not unrealistic for him to get a buyout. And he might have a stipulation in his contract to where if it's not, so, you know, like 30 day back guarantee, you know, 30 day money back guarantee. It could be something like that. Listen, I don't know. It could be. I'm just saying, you know, you know, I don't know. man. That's, I don't, I don't, you know, so Dancy should stay in Valley. Listen, man, like I, I to a certain extent, I agree with you, but I've been to Valley. I've seen the games. I've seen the support. It's not there, man. Like it's really not, and Mr. Campbell can speak to it too. We went to the we went to the Fam U and Valley game. Like it was like a hundred people from Fam and maybe like a hundred people from Valley. You know what I'm saying? Like 120, 120 from Valley, 100 from Fam. Like it wasn't, it wasn't. It, it's there's no support now. When Jackson State went down there, Jackson State it was live, it was lit. You know what I'm saying? But it's that. It, it, there's no, there was no excitement there. So, and I'm not saying there's going to be excitement at PV. I'm not saying that at all because we saw what PV was at the SWAC champion or at their, at their, at their game. So, I'm not saying that there's excitement at PV either. And I'm not saying Vincent Dancy is going to make more excitement at there because clearly, when you're going into, you try to clinch up the West or you're on your senior day, nobody comes out to support you. You don't have the fan support that you thought you had. So, I'm not saying that's it. That so PV is not the best place for. Um, fan interaction. We'll just say that it's not one of the schools of great fan interaction. But at the end of the day, Dancy is a damn good coach, and he can do if he's been doing what he's doing at Valley, he can do it twice over, I believe. At um PV, what's up, Mister Ford? You got all the time in the world. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't understand why uh, um Prairie View hadn't looked at the guy at Bowie State. I think he would be a great choice. Get the guy from Bowie State, bring his whole staff. They've done well in the Division Two playoffs. I watch Division Two football. It's not bad now. I mean, y'all might not believe that, but uh, I watch Valdosta State. Uh, I watch Bowie. I, I, I'm impressed with them. And uh, I, I'm just, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Who, who's the athletic director? Does he know what's going on? Why you stuck? Listen, Odoms is not going to lead Norfolk State to come to Prairie View. I, I can't see that. Why would he, you know, you leave Southern, you go to Prairie, I mean, you leave Southern, you go to Norfolk, the people at Norfolk love you, then you're going to come, you're going to leave and go to Prairie View? That don't make no sense. Um, so, so I'm saying, uh, uh, so the, I, I, I think that guy, Boy State, and his staff deserve a chance. Prairie View. The last time Prairie View brought a guy down from um, uh, Boy State was Henry Frazier. You remember what he did for him? He had K.J. Black. They won the conference. So I'm saying give that guy down uh, Bowie State a chance. Tell him to bring him down and his staff and, and bring them down to uh, Prairie View and end that, you know, because this don't make no sense. Everybody's making moves in the swag and Prairie View sitting on their ass. And uh, listen, I, I, you know, uh, Scotty, I can go way back now hold on, hold talking on, about hold Prairie on, View. Hold on, hold on, you hold know on. I can about that, about the history of Prairie View. Hold on, Mr. Prairie Ford, View. Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, real quick, real quick. Uh, so the uh, athletic director is Dr. Donald Reed. I don't know if you know him. but And he ain't doing nothing because he should have had this. Listen, this this should have been handled. The other thing I want, I don't know. If you, I know you keeping up with it, Scotty. Listen, do you see all them moves uh, Cornell Main is making that? Uh, oh, man. Uh, Alabama oh, and him, oh, all them man. players he's, he bringing in. He's doing. What you think time. about that? I absolutely love it. Listen, like Conor Conor Maynard knows he look. He's like, listen, to be a trash talker like the way Maynard is, he couldn't go out. He couldn't go out the way he did in the regular season. You got to come right. back. You know, you got to come back hard and 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 at least give your team a fighting chance and and believe in your coaching because I feel like Maynard. Right. Feels, I feel like Maynard's like, okay, you can get all these top athletes, but can you coach them up? I can coach my kids up because you see what I've done with walk-ons. You see what I've done with non-scholarship players. I do the, I do my best work. You know what I'm saying? So I think this year is going to see the, the, the you, I think you're going to see the matriculation of coach Maynard and his coaching staff and, and everything that they're going to bring to this, to this season, but their recruiting has been a one. And if you're, and if we're being honest, if we're really being honest, Maynard, if you're, if you're comparing recruiting, right? So like if you're comparing right. apples to apples, 
I would give a slight edge, and I know it's going to sound really bad. I'm going to give a slight edge to Maynard because he doesn't have the name brand and name recognition of a Deion Sanders and is still pulling in. I think he got like three, four stars. You know what I'm saying? So right. you got to get like, don't get me wrong. I, I, Dion is on a whole nother track. You know what I'm saying? But we all know why that is. It's because his name is Dion. Conal Maynard is just doing it because it's Conal Maynard. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just, right. getting, he's just bringing right. people in. So if I had to give a slight, if I had to give a slight edge to recruiting just on apples to apples, I have to give it to Maynard because he's doing a lot more with a lot less. Like I don't have the name recognition of a Dion. I don't have Barstool backing me. I don't have, you know what I'm saying? All these super new facilities and all these new, um, you know, all this stuff on Instagram and all these, all these followers and people just want to follow me. I'm sorry, man. Like it just, I got to just give the slight edge to Maynard just because of what, of what he's doing with, 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 without all the fanfare. Well, listen, I, I don't know if you heard, but they said Atlanta has given the red carpet to Jackson State and to South Carolina State. And the word I'm getting now is that Houston is definitely going pro. He's not coming back. That's what's up. Have you heard that? I heard the same thing. I, I talked to somebody deep into yeah. – um, I, I talked to somebody in deep. I'm talking about close to Dion. He said that two things. He said Travis Hunter will be playing both ways. And he said – Yeah, that, I heard that too. And he told me that um, uh, Houston's gone. He's not coming back. And did you hear that Roland Martin did his whole show from uh f- from the events at the um with the celebration bowl? No, I didn't. I heard the whole show was done down there. They said they had uh, the the little red girl from um uh, ESPN. She's from Atlanta. Um Elle Duncan, I heard she was all in the mix down there. No, I didn't hear any of that. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if uh, Roland does his show. Well, I'm, I'm thinking that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be kind of, you know, the Bayou Classic would always have them black celebrities on the sideline. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that the uh, Celebration Bowl this year going to be packed with nothing but black celebrities. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, it's... Absolutely. It, yeah. And especially after what Doug, yeah. especially what after Doug Gottlieb said to, um, you know, the past few days. Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But yeah. let me tell you something. He's an ignorant... I can't say what I want to say, but I, listen, he, he he's typical. He's typical. And and let me tell you something. I've I've listened to him for years. He's terrible. He's terrible. Uh but uh what what they're letting you know is that the swag is coming up. When they hate you like that, that means that you're doing a lot of things correct. That's what it means. That means that the swag is coming up. When they when they can say the things that Godless said and, and the stuff that uh Dabo Sweeney is saying and that mm-hmm. stuff that uh that guy Mississippi Lane Kippen is saying, that means that the swag has that upward arrow. It's it's projection is going up. And and P V so, and P V's hire needs to keep it pushing up. So I hey, appreciate the call, Mr. Ford. Okay, have a good one here. Now. Hey caller, you loud, talk to me. Yeah, I just want to uh I'm a PV alum when they Ray. Um I want to talk about the the losing streak we had at Prairie View in the in the nineties. Mm-hmm. The reason for that was because the athletic department, the whole athletic department, was suspended for like a year. And then when it came back, they had no scholarship for years. The whole time I was at Prairie View, we did not win a game. All the sports struggled, Ooh. and it wasn't until maybe maybe. I would say six to seven years after that where they really started giving scholarships out again and it didn't happen until they didn't really start winning until Henry Frazier got there and Frazier turned the whole thing around and got him back on track and then he left and went back to the East Coast but that's what happened so my, so, so you, had, you had regular students going out there playing these games because they just had school pride but we just didn't have those scholarship recruits that you need in order to have a program. All right. So we, we passed that nineties gone. You know what I'm saying? No more Hillman college, you know, more, none, none of that. All right. So now what are y'all doing now? Because you just came off a great season um, with, with Eric Dooley going to the SWAC championship. What are you guys looking to do? Because if you're looking to recycle I, the coach, go ahead. They got to get a coach that can recruit Texas to get all these. They keep bringing these guys in from other places it's time to get a guy that can recruit Texas. He can be one of these high school coaches that are on the up coming up. You can get a Sumlin. I hear this guy Van Malone, who's a assistant coach at um, Kansas State, might be interested in the job. He's from Texas. He's from Houston. Had uh, experience at SMU. 
We need a guy that can recruit Texas. We don't care about all this other stuff Dion doing. If you can, if you can recruit Houston and Dallas, that's it. We can dominate the swag just if you can get the recruits out of those two cities alone. We don't need all this other stuff. We need to be get a guy that can recruit the state of Texas, and we'll be just fine. So that's what needs to happen. So let me ask you this: What about? Uh, and I mean, if that's the case, then I, I would think that you know, looking at a coach from Duncanville, you know, a coach from you know maybe one of the powerhouses from Houston, you know, that one of those high school coaches, you know, you can listen. If we're being honest, PV is not looking to win a SWAC championship again in no time soon. So you have time to build. You know what I'm saying? So why not get a head head coach from high school or, you know, maybe a Kevin Sumlin or, you know, something like that? They got whoever they get. The guy got to be able to recruit Texas, period. So get out. Because what happens is these other coaches, they bring they, – they used to recruiting in Louisiana or I think Frazier like to recruit in the Baltimore, Maryland area and – you have everything you need within the state of Texas. You just need a guy that can go out there and get it done. And that's what needs to happen at Prairie View at the end of the day. Right. I don't care who the coach is. As long as he can recruit the state of Texas, we'll be fine. Hey, appreciate the call. Oh, man. We got a little, little PV. PV guys got here getting a little feisty. Hey, Carly, you loud. Talk to me. Yeah, Scotty, how you doing? Good. Talk to me. All right. Well, I just wanted to just uh, quickly say uh, that I've been hearing this you know, talk about the possibility of Coach Dancy coming to Prairie View. I've been watching the Chiefs and the uh, Chargers game, but when I heard that, I had to chime in on you. <laughs> and I feel Coach Dancy should stay at uh, Mississippi Valley. I mean, because I mean, now I know that's the trend. Now you got these coaches going to, to the next hottest thing, but I just think it's, it's better to just stay and develop something special. And I think he's doing that at Mississippi Valley. He just need more time to, uh, like I said, build a program. And I think uh, great coaches are measured by that and not going to the next hot thing. I, I don't think pre Prairie View is the next hot thing. I think Prairie View is just a, a school with more resources for Coach Dancy to do what he does. Like, P P man, listen, um, PV is not the next hot thing. Let's let's be hunt. Let's be well, honest. I, yeah, I understand it, but um, but see, that's case in point. That just leads into what I'm trying to say. If Prairie View is not that big of a leg up, then why leave when you got something special that you're building at Mississippi Valley? Oh no, 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 no. Look, don't get me wrong. It's better than Valley. Like, don't get me. <laughs> let's let's not get it confused. Like, PV is better than Valley. The I mean, but what I'm saying is, it's not the next hot thing, but it, it's better than where he's yeah, at yeah. now, and they can give him more. He has more resources and he can do. A, I, I, I don't know how he recruits the state of Texas. I do not know that. So I'm going I'm to leave that one alone. But oh, OK, well, yeah. I get you on that. But I'm just saying is that, you know, if uh, Purview is not that higher, you know, like, for example, going to Notre Dame or something like that, they stay and build something special at uh, Mississippi Valley. You know, I'm getting sick of all these coaches happen. thinking that Southern school let is me, better let, because they me, may have gotten some other uh, better resources me, or. They could think they could do more. Stay and build something. Okay, let me ask build you something for nothing. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question because you, yes, sir. People like to talk about stuff, but they wouldn't do it in their own life. If you had a job that paid you pennies on the dollar, didn't give you everything you need, and you were being successful at it, and when you went back and and, and then you're like, you have another job offering you something where they're going to give you all the resources you need, they're going to give you more money, and your efforts are being are being like rewarded, would you not take the other job? But that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, you're right. We look at it that way, but if your administration is willing, for example, they, they're willing to, uh, you know, ante up, if they're willing, if you can use that other uh, team or other organization as leverage to get what you need where you're at, then why not try that first? Coach Dancy has been there three or four years. They have not gotten a new field. They have cut his scholarships in half. L listen, he's doing this with half scholarships. So you think everybody else in the SWAT gets 63, he gets 32 or 33 scholarships. Oh, I see. Okay. You, you see I, okay, I read you. I'm just saying is that but he, if he's such a special coach, then stay him develop Mississippi Valley. Come on, bro. Like, he's special because he beat y'all with 33 scholarships. Did you? Do you not? Like, yeah. So I yeah, think, yeah, I know he's a great coach. I know he's a so young, why, up and coming guy. I, so I mean, you I'm not debating that. I'm just saying we we it seems like we're in such a, a era now where everybody's going after the celebrity hire or, or everybody's going after the next big you no know, 
big fish uh, organization or football program when they need to stay and develop, you know, and have faith in the kids where yeah. Sir, no, that's not realistic. What are you talking about? You're you're that's like if you was at a job, they're paying you half of what your counterparts are getting. And you're, and, you're, and that's like me telling you, stay there, work it out. It'll get better. You would be like, Negro, shut your dumb ass up. I'm about to move and get me a new job and get paid. What what did, get what paid. Did, well, Eddie Robinson, you say years ago, because he had to uh, develop the grambling program years ago out of nothing. And he called it a labor of love. <laughs> Man, listen, that, that ain't today. That ain't the day. We oh, okay. And, and one more thing, Mr. Guy, yeah. I got well, a quick NFL question for you, right. and I'm going to sign off, but I enjoy your show, and be careful. Have a great time in Atlanta this weekend. What do you think about Deion Sanders going to Jacksonville, Jaguars? And I'll listen to you off the air. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. No problem. All right, so the question, guys, was how do I feel about Deion Sanders going to Jacksonville Jaguars? It's not going to work because Deion can't control <laughs> You can't control the narrative, right? Like, Dion is great because his name brings in players, right? That's not how it works in the NFL. In the NFL, your checkbook brings in players, and you only can bring in so many amount of players, right? Now, his name, say, could probably get about one or two superstars, right? But at the end of the day, can that can you get a quarterback? Can you get a running back? Can you get a you probably gonna get a you probably gonna get some good defensive players because they want to play with you, but they're not gonna take pay cuts just to go play with you. They're not gonna play take pay cuts to just because you're Deion Sanders. Dog. They, he's a grown ass man with families with mortgages getting paid millions of dollars. No, he he's a great he's a great college guy. He is he's the definition of a black urban Meyer. You're a great college guy because your name alone brings in recruits. That's what it is. All right, so. He, he's going to stay in college because he can control the narrative and he can control the recruits and his name brings in uh, millions and millions of dollars of and money in recruits. Control hey, caller, you live. Talk to me. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask you. Turn your background down. About. Uh-huh. Turn your background down. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I just I wanted to call in and ask you. Every time a school, it doesn't matter whether it's the swag or one of the Power Five schools. Whatever schools are the most successful that's winning, they generally have schools that are looking for a coach uh, appeal from their staff. What does it say that nobody's even talking about any of the assistance from JSU? Because they don't. That's a great question, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because in this, and I feel the same way. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take not one assistant from Jackson State um, because. They're not the sauce that makes the they're not the they're not the reason that makes the engine go. They're not the engine that makes the train go. You get what I'm saying? Like they are they're just crew members. They're just crew members. They, but and they're doing a hell of a job. Dion has put together a great staff, right? But he is the he is the sauce. He is the secret sauce. He's the space jam water. He's the he's the name on the restaurant that makes people come in the door. That's why I'm not taking nobody off his staff. Now, Dennis Thurman, I think he'll be a great head coach, but can he recruit? I don't think he can. T.C. Taylor, I think he'll be a good head coach, but can he recruit? No, he can't. Nobody can recruit like that man at the top, which his name is Deion Sanders. And that's what that that to me is the key, because is Dennis Thurman, Dennis Thurman without Nugget, without Houston, without Travis Hunter, without Keontae Hampton, without Aubrey Miller? Heck no. Heck no. Because he's not getting those players in because of his name. Is T.C. Taylor doing – no, because he ain't getting a Shador Sanders. He's not getting a um, Malachi Wyman. He's not getting a Robert Lanier. He's not that – these – these the guys around Dion are not that guy. So they're not going to get this high-level talent that Dion is. Dion's the one that's bringing in the groceries. He's asking them to cook it up. That's it. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you think Nick Saban is uh, – is – is – Going into these people's living rooms initially, because Dion ain't going in there initially. These coaches are getting him, getting everything set up, and Dion is closing the deal. I just think that a lot of a lot of these coaches are getting discounted for what they're bringing to the table. Nah, because listen, man, th this is this is what Dion is. Dion is like this: Go find me anybody you like that fits your system. I'm gonna close the deal. That's what it is. He is the ultimate closer. All he's telling, I bet I know for a fact, all he's telling his personnel is, I don't care what their star rating is. I don't care where they live. I don't care what they do. If they can fit here, go recruit them, and I'm going to close the deal. It's going to be on me. And if you flipped it, if you flipped the reverse, that 
a lot of these kids would not be coming to Jackson State if Dennis Thurman had to close the deal, if on if Coach Andre Hart had to close the deal, if Coach if Coach TC Taylor had to close the deal. They're not coming to Jackson State, but but Deion Sanders is closing the deals, and that's what's getting players through that door. Okay, so let me answer this, and then I'm gonna let you go. Mm -hmm. uh, so, do you you don't think that Coach Lee? could be just as good as coach nope. as a Danzy when it comes to recruiting. Uh, I mean, don't compare the assistant from JSU to Dion because Dion is a is that he's on a separate planet by himself. He's the one percent. But if you compare uh Coach Flea his, his hiring him to hire somebody else that you would bring from some some of the uh coaches that the other callers was talking about, mm -hmm. I think that he is an upgrade. And I also know that he's been a head coach before. Yes. And I also know that he's been uh, putting a lot of meat and potatoes together to get Prime to go in and close the deal. Okay, let me... Let and me, he did a hell of a job. He right. did a hell of a job keeping the car in the road when Dion missed those Sir, three games. Really, bro? Did, did, yeah. How long have you been... How long have you been watching this show? Uh... I've been watching it for a while. Okay. Let me tell you what the pecking order is at this at the school because I said this. It goes like this. Deion Sanders, the head coach. Shadour Sanders, the assistant head coach. And then it's Coach Fleet, right? So as long as Shadour Sanders is not... <laughs> no, I'm being dead serious. As long as Shadour... Boy, that's so disrespectful, it's bro. Not, it's so I'm, 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 you're not. You're not... No, sorry. Like, you're not understanding what I'm saying to you. I'm not even trying to be funny right now. Shadour Sanders is the assistant head coach because he knows... The, he knows the expectations of the team. He has to go out and protect his dad. Coach Flea don't have to protect his dad like like he does. Him and him and his dad are linked at the hip. So whatever his dad goes out and say, Shador has to go back that up. Coach Flea ain't got to go back that up. That's why Shador Sanders kept that car on the – he kept that train on the tracks because he knows what's at stake. He knows the expectations. He's lived this his whole life. His, he knows what his last name brings. So, no, Coach Flea didn't keep this on the track. Shador Sanders kept that thing on the track when his dad was outside in the hospital. He kept his team focused. He kept them boys in line. Like, don't get me wrong, I know Coach is Coach, but at the end of the day – Shador Sanders is the glue that makes everybody go forward, bro. Like, if you, if you can't, like, don't get me wrong. They have captains on side of the ball. But at the end of the day, the head man is Shador Sanders. Uh, I'm going to let you go on that. But I, I really feel like that's one of the most disrespectful things I heard you say. That's fact. Because you're discounting. You're discounting. Okay. All the, all the ability and hard work that these coaches uh, put, you know, into effort as far as getting these guys to stay on track. Okay. Because it's very, very easy. It's very, very easy that car to go off the rail and for them to lose one or two of those games while Deion go. Okay, so let me give you let me let me ask you a question before you go, right? Who hurts yeah. more? Let, I, I just I want you to be very I want you to sit and think about this because I, I think you're not really thinking about it. Who gets criticized okay. more for a loss? Coach Flea or Shador Sanders? In this particular scenario, it would have been Coach Flea. Well, bro, bro, come, come on, bro. And I tell you why, because you pushing your button and saying that that's stupid and don't nobody know college football like you because you played for half a season before you go into your rant. Can I go ahead and tell you? Why? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Did I say anything? I ain't say nothing. I just let you go. But I've been. Hey, hey, listen, I, I know you, bro. I, I, I didn't know say anything. You're, you're trying to but I didn't say anything. You over here telling me what I said to okay. you. I didn't say nothing. So go ahead. Okay, so, so let me tell you this real quick. This is what the narrative would have been. You got all these five-star recruits. You got you got Nugget. You got Houston. You got firepower on the uh, offensive end of the ball. And you mean to tell me you couldn't win two games without Coach Prime? That's what the narrative would have been. It wouldn't have been Shadur Sanders. It would have been Coach Flea. You can't motivate a fucking ant if you can't get these four uh, four stars and three stars and all this loaded weaponry on offense and defense and still be able to go and win these games. They wouldn't have said a bitch-ass thing about Shadur Sanders. Okay, bro. That, that, that just shows me how ignorant you are to the situation. But that's your opinion, though. But, oh, wow. I mean, it does. It does. I'm not saying Coach Flea wouldn't have got 
I'm not saying Coach Fleet wouldn't have had great criticism, but for you to say on this that he would have never had anything to – he wouldn't have said anything about Shador? I would have said something about Shador. Come on, bro. That is so unrealistic, bro. Boy, y'all are you. And how do we get on Jackson State anyway? You over here talking about Jackson State. How, the, the subject's not even about that today. And it, how, and it always goes back. Hey, caller, you lie. Talk to me. That last caller song was crazy as hell. Nah, he, he must he, never play sports. He's, 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 he's emotional, bro. Like, right, let, me, let, me, let, me explain, emotional? let me explain to him to a person who never plays sports. As a person who's on a team, the coaches can work day and night. Guess what the players don't really care about, how hard they work. And guess who they listen to more than anybody else? They are the teammates. So you could <laughs> – that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. It's the quarterback. Why do you think the quarterback get paid the most money in the NFL? Come on, man. A coach in the NFL don't get paid the most money. Who 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 led the Super Bowl team? Tom Brady or the coach on the sideline? I know. So that, that, that last call is sound retarded. That's all I wanted to tell him. Like, bro, you sound retarded. Hush up. I, you know what it is? I think he got a family member that may be a coach. So that's why he said, I found, probably feel offended. But, but it's facts. But it's facts. If you, if, you can't, if you can't get that baseline, if you can't even understand that baseline of, of football, that, yes, coaches are there to guide you and mentor you and all that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, players, players make that locker room go. All right, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, they were the leaders of the team. Okay, so when you when you step out there, and especially with Shador Sanders knows what's on the line every single game and him saying legendary and, and him saying what he said at the press conference in the spring, all those things go back into Shador's mind and says, yo, we can't let this thing go off the rails. We can't let this thing go off the rails, but I'm disrespecting Coach Flea. OK, right. Hey, caller, you loud. Talk to me. Shoot, what's up, Scotty? What's man? Up? Let's get back on this topic, bro. Um, what I think that TV need to do is um, they need to look at probably like the best 10, 10 to 15 coaches in the state of Texas. Like, they need to do that. And they need to look at like the best 10 offense coordinators in Texas and see what they can get from out of that. Mm -hmm. If they want, if they want, home recruiting and home everything, that's the best way to do it. Because especially for a high school coach, you get one of the top 10, top 15 high school coaches, you know, you know you're going to at least get 12 to 11 kids that you know that wanted to play with you or played on another team and like this scheme say, so, oh, I'm going to go there. So it's it's easier said than them. I think they're overthinking things. Like it's it's not that hard to find a good coach in Texas, especially at the high school level and at the um and at a college level. Because they they live, die, sleep, eat, breathe football. Like that's that's what they do. So like like they just make it. I think they're just making it complicated over this. Uh, they just minimize the the foolishness that they're doing and really broke it down and think like, okay, what's going to get us the best athletes at this point in time? Because TV don't really need no no um, celebrity coach. They really don't. Like they Why just not? need they just need the right coach for the right job. Like that's what they need to be looking at. They don't need to look at oh, let's get somebody from the MIAC. They don't need to try to get somebody from down the way across the street or something like that. Just get the best coach for the job and their program will turn out good like it like it's been doing. So that's what I really think they need to do is not that hard and stop trying to and people stop trying to compare prime time to everybody else. That's like comparing apples to oranges. That's like comparing the gold to silver. All right, come on. Y'all got to stop doing that, man. This is my thing, but right? This, no, sir. Hold on, before I let you go. go this, this is my thing. This is why I feel as though they do need a celebrity coach. And the reason I feel like they do need a celebrity coach is because those high school coaches are going to have a hard time. Oh, okay. The high school coaches are going to know where to find talent, right? 
the pockets, the areas of Dallas that you probably don't know or whatever. But I think what a celebrity coach does is that the the vicinity of D ones around PV, you know, what I'm saying the Sam Houston's, the Rice's, the all the U of H, all those big time schools that are around in that small vicinity. I feel like that's what draw like you you get you have to battle them on a constant basis of Texas talent. And I think what a celebrity coach does is kind of put your school just above those schools. And PV does have the facilities that from what I've been told that now you can start pulling in those good recruits into your school without having to bat to really battle those other outside schools for recruits. If you get what I'm saying now, I do think a high a Dallas, I think a, mm -hmm. a Texas high school coach is, is going to be a, is going to be a long-term build. That's a three, four, five year build, which if you're okay with that, that's cool. But I think that if you're looking for something to be competitive right now, step into day one in year one or year two, be competitive. You need a celebrity coach to grab to grab the attention of Texas and to make sure that now coaches are coming to you with players instead of you having to go find. But I do. I do. I, listen, I'm not I'm not opposed to either one, but I would prefer a celebrity coach mm -hmm. to ride the wave. But if PV wants to go the long term deal, you definitely get a high school coach from um, from uh, Texas. Okay, question. Um, what celebrity like would you do? Would you do just straight a uh, Texas celebrity athlete, or would you just try to go out there and get somebody that fits your system? Um, do it just go like homegrown? I man, listen. So I've heard people say Vince Young. I wouldn't do it. I think I think Vince Young is. I think he's. I mean, he's a Houston legend. Um, but I wouldn't do yeah. it. I like Kevin Sumlin. He's been at Texas A&M before. He knows the state of Texas. His name does have some buzz in Texas. I wouldn't have a problem mm -hmm. with that. If you want to go celebrity, celebrity, I think Ed Reed would be perfect. Um, I think Ray Lewis would be perfect just off pure celebrity status alone. Like, yeah. I mean, Ray Lewis going to PV, I think that would be freaking amazing. Um, and I think the state of Texas would just just be crazy. Um, so yeah. those are my choices. Um, go ahead. Art Bryles, I like that name. Art Bryles, I like that name. Art this, this is just a funny choice. What do you think about Michael Irvin? I think some of the younger, like if you're not a Cowboys fan, I think some of the younger kids don't really know what Michael Irvin is. I think because I'm a, I that's my guy. That's my favorite player of all time is Michael Irvin. Um, 88 playmaker. Mm -hmm. Like if I ever met him, I probably faint. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, <laughs> like that's how big of a fan I was. Um. I don't know, man. I think I think that's I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that one. I wouldn't do that one. I think he's just a great motivator. Um, I, I think you got to go a little mm -hmm. younger than that, and and I don't think Michael is in involved with the with the culture. Like I don't think he can move in the culture like Dion does. You know what I'm saying? Dion moves very yeah. very seamlessly in the culture. You need a coach that can move in the culture. And I think Kevin Sumlin. I'm not saying he can move in the culture because from what I heard, he's kind of like a white black man. But I think his name does ring bells, so I think he's going to get top notch recruits because of his name and his. And I mean, come on, he. I mean, he's going to bring Johnny Mel. You know, he's going to bring Johnny Manziel in. You know, he's going to do like little things like that. So right. I think that works. Right. All right, man. Be good, Scotty. Hey, man. Appreciate the call as always. All right, please. Hey, caller, you live. Talk to me. All right, man. Be good, Scotty. Scotty, talk to me. Johnny Johnson. From uh from Alabama, man. Uh, I've been sitting here thinking about this PV thing, and I, I agree with you. I think that uh, a celebrity coach would be the move for them. But if that's not on the table, um, if a something is not on the table, uh, I've been I've been in the chat putting up Damian Craig, man. I'm from Alabama. I, I've been following Damian Craig since college. And if you look at Texas A&M, they just signed the best raccoon class in the nation, probably the best ever. And Damon Craig is one of the main guys uh, out there grabbing them recruits. He's forty. He's forty-seven years old. He's young. He's right up the road. Um, he's hungry to be a head coach. Of course, he wanted to come to my alma mater, Alabama State, but that's another story. Boy, <laughs> that's don't another even, story. Don't even get, don't even get but, me going um, with that. Yeah. Uh, for all the PV stakeholders and the PV people in the chat, man, y'all need to really look at this cat. Okay, let me ask you this. Really See, this is the thing where you know this is this is the one thing I have to I kind of I kind of push back on guys who recruit at a high level at Power Fives because they have it's like this, right? It's like when you pull up. It, it, uh, let me uh, let's stay with me here. Damian Craig is talking to a chick, right? He pulls up in a Honda right. Civic, right? 
And he's like, yo, girl, you know, I got this. I got that. And she's looking at his car like, but you in a Honda Civic, boo boo. And she doesn't give him time mm-hmm. of day. He comes back and he's right. pushing a Benz. He don't got to say right. much. He don't got to say much. Hey, just get in. So that's what you're dealing right. with. At P- that's what you're dealing with PV at Texas A&M. One's a Honda Civic and one's a Benz. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to do too much convincing to kids to come to Texas A&M. You show them the facilities. They're going. They're going to be on TV. We're going to, you know, we're we're in uh, the mm-hmm. SEC. Mm-hmm. You, you, you're you're feeding them everything they want to hear, so they're gonna get in the car and ride with you. But when you coming from okay. PV, you got to have a smooth talk game to get that girl into your to get that girl into your Honda Civic. You know what I'm saying? You well, gotta, Scott, go ahead. I thought about that. I thought of, I thought about that exact thing you just just talked you just said. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you when you're all right, first of all, I'm 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 gonna make two points real quick. Uh, uh, Craig started out at Tuskegee, and he loaded up at Tuskegee, okay, which has no facilities, no. Uh, you haven't been to Tuskegee yet, bro. If no. you go there, you'll be amazed. On, on how ridiculous their uh, facilities are. Mm. So he cut his teeth at Tuskegee. But once he got to Auburn, he got to Texas A&M, okay, yeah, you got all this nice shit. But guess what? All the other SEC schools got nice stuff. So it's, it's almost kind of relative. You still got to have talk games Facts. because all those other schools got nice stuff. So it's still going to come down to you. What's your talk game? You know, uh, LSU got nice shit, you know. Auburn got nice stuff. Bama, oh, Bama is ridiculous, you know. So he still had to go in and sell that kid against all the schools in the SEC West, all the Pac-10 schools, Big Ten schools, whatever. It's all relative. It doesn't change, you know. So you still got to have that sale game, uh, uh, whether you at Texas A&M or at PV. You still got to have it, you know. So that's kind of how I look at it. I see your point of view, but I, I still think that he had to have some serious talk game to get in there. Like, oh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Tuskegee was a D2 powerhouse. Right. And uh, he was a big part of that for two or three years. As he, um, and they have nothing. I mean, they have nothing down there. So that's all I wanted to say, man. Uh, I hope people get a good guy. But that's, that's something that they ought to look at. I, I just think. You know, I'm excited, man. But, uh, and I, listen, I would and, yeah. uh, listen. <laughs> I would not be upset if they got Damian Craig. Listen, nothing is worse as Alabama State. You know, I don't care what nobody talks about. I'll get listen, listen. If you, I have, I have my expectations, so that's why I might right. be like, dang, y'all want a celebrity. But when I compare it to Alabama State, <laughs> everything's a win. <laughs> Bro. They have they have torn the fan base apart with that hire, man. I mean, you have no idea how how people have been fighting and cussing each other out on Facebook for like the last week about that hire. It, 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 it's pandemonium over here, man. Man, it, but, it, uh, it should be. Somebody need to be uh, accountable, but we just gonna leave it at that. But hey, man, appreciate the call, man. It, Thanks, got it. it no problem. That is too funny. <laughs> Listen, I don't care what I don't. I don't care who you bring in. Anything better than Alabama State and a realtor. Okay. So I mean you need Rocket Mortgage Stadium. Anyway, hey, hey, why you playing though? Let's be real. They could set up an NIL deal with three um with Rocket Mortgage. That would be really that would I would actually do that. I'm not even trying to be funny right now. Like if if Alabama State could set up a partnership with Rocket Mortgage or a lending tree or something like that, that would be, that would be fire. Then all my jokes would really be like flat. That would be dope. Like, let's be real. If he could set up an NIL deal with his kids from like rocket mortgage or something, that would be legit. That would be legit. Like, or what's those play? What's those, what's those like, like um, the realtor people that like the companies that be giving you realtor, like Kelly, yeah, Keller Williams or something like that. That would be that would be fire. Like have a Keller Williams NIL deal or like a Century Twenty One, Zillow, Redfin. That that would be dope. That would actually be dope. I'm not even gonna fake. That would be. <laughs> he said players with all these home loans. 
Oh man, that would be fire. Nah, I, listen, man. Listen, you got to think outside the box, man. You got to think outside the box. But hey, man, I'm about to get up out of here. <laughs> oh man. Hey, how many likes are you watching it, babe? How many likes I got? Oh shoot, I'm about to get up out of here anyway. Hey, make sure um you guys subscribe to the membership once again. Uh, follow me on IG and Twitter. Um, off script underscore TV. All right. Um, <laughs> oh man, sponsored by payday loans. Huh? All right. Well, how many likes I got? I need 150 likes before I get up out of here, guys. Scotty, what do you think about Jordan Lewis uh, in the transfer portal? I think that was that hurts. I ain't gonna lie to you. That hurts, but I. Once again, I didn't think Jordan Lewis was really that guy. I think if he went, if I think if he goes to a power five conference, you have to play him at linebacker. You have to, man. Like he is not a DN. That's not his, that's not his speed. That's not his thing. That's not his skill set. Like he needs to go play a versatile linebacker. That's what he needs to go do. So if he goes power five, he goes group of five, they need to put him back at the linebacker position. All right. Have him rush, move, cover in space. That's what he needs to do because if he's thinking about, if he's thinking about um going to the league, it's not at DN. It's not at DN. He needs to he needs to get his butt back there. Uh, ooh, I like that. I like that. Um, he needs to get his butt back at linebacker or as as a as a free safety or strong safety. All right. That's what that's what needs to happen. So I, I think he's very versatile. He has the speed to do a lot. He's super athletic, but he's not a DN. He's a line. He's a tweener. He's a strong safety. He's a he's a strong safety or inside the box backer. That's what he is. So um, that's that's what needs to happen. He needs to move that. Hey, make sure y'all get my likes up. Uh, so hey, subscribe to my boy Blue. He's in here. The Blue Bloods right here. Subscribe to my boy Blue. Make sure you join his membership as well. Um, Jordan Lewis went to the transfer portal. Um, somebody told me about CJ Holmes and um and Justin Houston getting invited to the NFL PA college bowl or something like that. The mere fact that CJ Holmes got an invite to go anywhere, okay? Like and Miss Miss Holmes, Miss Don Holmes, I know you watch the show. I know you're a fan. I I know you're his mama. I'm Listen, I love you guys. I love you and your husband. Y'all cool. Y'all great people. But I got to call a spade a spade. CJ Holmes should not have been invited to the Mercury Bowl. Okay? Like, let's be 100%. I'm, and listen, I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. Okay? I'm happy for him. Let me get that very straight. I'm happy for him. But for him to be invited over Keontae and Aubrey Miller, that's that's trash. That's trash. Okay? So, let's, once again, great kid, happy for him, all right? Happy for him, but he should not have gotten invited anywhere, all right? He, he, if, if blue had the analytics for this team, right? I mean, from just, just from, listen, blue has one game that they play ULM in the analytics. ULM couldn't throw the ball in the ocean and make it land. Okay. They went at CJ Holmes. Blue was at 15 times. They threw, they threw the ball 21 times and 15 of them went at CJ Holmes. something crazy, some crazy stat like that. So I'm sorry. Once again, Miss Holmes, I love you. Your husband, I love y'all too. Y'all are good people. I just got to call a spade a spade. That, yeah, that, 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 that's not, that's not right. He, he wasn't, nah, that's, that wasn't right. That's all I'm going to say. It wasn't right. Justin Houston got invited. Of course, Justin, of course, Justin Houston got invited. It's Justin Houston. And then CJ Holmes got invited. They threw at him 16 times. He was getting his lunch money taken. They need someone to yeah, that's that was yeah. Oh, yeah, that was that was that was not bad. But listen, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. So <laughs> it is what it is. Where we at? 
All right, thank you. All right, so guys, listen, I'm about to get up out of here. Uh, Deputy Mario, uh, Key says, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, yeah, also, listen, if you want to send us something, right, if you, if you want to, listen, remember, National Bandwagon Signing Day is January 3rd, all right? If you would like to send us something, all right, if you would like to send us something, let me put my address in here, all right? For, you know, to buy my services, all right, to, to slut me out, all right? This is my address, all right? If you would like to send me anything, all right? Merch, it could be from PV. I don't have anything from Grambling, all right? Alabama State, don't even worry about it. I'm not picking y'all. It's not happening. So don't even waste your time sending me anything. All right. You're not getting picked. You're not on my top five. All right. So listen, if you want to send me anything to, to get me on your bandwagon. All right. That's my address below. Appreciate you guys. I keep telling you guys, slut me. you can slut me out with merch. All right. So uh, like I said, Dr. Lloyd Wilson, a fam, you alum. She sent me some stuff. I mean, had me fam you'd out, okay? What, what'd he say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, send me insurance. Dude, we're going to sell that number zero. Um, so, yeah, so you can do that. Hit me up, send me some stuff, all right? And we'll see if you join. Uh, I see if I join your bandwagon on National Signing Day. Uh, yeah. Need not apply. Need not apply. All right, need not apply. So once again, the last few announcements, I will be at the Celebration Bowl tomorrow. I mean, on Saturday, there will not be a pregame show on Saturday because I have to be at the game too early tomorrow. All right. Oh, Hidden Gems. Yes, Hidden Gems next week. All right, I'm going to start it up next week. Um, I think BJ won't be on the first the first episode, but I'm going to start it up because um, I definitely want to get this thing rolling before Sunday, day, uh, before February goes. So, Definitely Hidden Gems is going to start tomorrow on Tuesday. Please send me your videos on my IG or Instagram. Um, I mean, Twitter or Instagram. Um, and uh, Everyday Entrepreneurs, we're still taking applications. We're still taking um, people. If you want to be a part of that, you can hit me up on IG or Twitter. But I would prefer you email support at I – mean, I know you put it in here, babe. Uh, here it is. Email email. Email this, all right? If you're interested, tell her what you do, uh, you know, why you want, I don't want to say why you want to be on the show, but just tell us what you do, you know, your, you know, what you're into and everything like that. Give us kind of a brief synopsis and stuff like that so we can start making those um, uh, um, appointments and getting everything situated because everything's pretty much going to pick up after the Celebration Bowl, all right? So if you're interested in the Everyday Entrepreneur Show, you're a CEO, CFO, VP, president or something, you own your own business, um, I, I'm doing an interview so you can tell your story. Email here, all right, so you can get your stuff heard and, and things like that, all right? Do not send me no, don't send me nothing. Don't send me, don't do this. I will burn it in the heart. I'll burn it on, I will burn it on YouTube. Don't, don't do me, all right? Don't play with me like that. All right, until next time, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to holler. God bless. <laughs>